Hello. Hi. Um. God bless you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. <clears throat> Praise God. <laughs> um, Matthew 15, 10 through 20. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defile a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came he, his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? after they heard this saying. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be uprooted. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly, and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Um, the reason why I'm talking about this is because a long time ago I was super caught up in taking care of my body, you know, exercising, eating all the right foods, ha taking all the right herbs, you know, I've talked about this in a video before, but this is more of like a biblical understanding because the Bible specifically states that it's not what we eat, it's what comes out of our mouth, and of course we need to not eat 10 pies in a row we need to just still have discipline but not to where you're putting yourself in bondage and you're worried about your outward appearance your outward feelings the way your body feels because none of that matters the body will die and it's just a meat it's just a meat vehicle you know that gets us around on earth and so my point is is that you can be eating the healthiest foods, the freshest foods, you know, animals right off the farm, food right off your farm, and nourish your bodies, and you may have six-pack and, you know, can run a marathon and be extremely healthy in your physical body, and you even look healthy, your skin's great, you know, everything's good about yourself. But... We're not worried about the outward appearance. Well, we should be worried about our soul and what condition our soul is in. Because you can have all those things I just named, but if your soul, or um, excuse me, if your heart is evil, then all your bodily exercise profits nothing, and it it means nothing. It's all vain. Um, basically, when you, um get cleansed from the inside out your outward appearance and the way you feel is pretty much taken care of because the inward affects the outward so if people you know people nowadays are go they go to the doctor you know every six months they get a checkup and the doctor says oh your heart's in good shape your blood's good you know you're just in immaculate shape you're awesome you're you have longevity you're gonna live at least another 50 years um, when people listen to the doctor and they say, oh, cool, I'm healthy, like, everything's good, you know, I'm good. Um, that may be true, like, your body is good and stuff, but you have to remember that God is in control of the day you die. You could walk out of that doctor's office healthy as a spring chicken and have a heart attack. Or, um, anything can happen to you because you're not in control of your own death. Um, your own... You're not in control at all. So people are being deceived by going to the doctor and just getting checkups with the doctor to make sure that their flesh is okay. When we know that we're not supposed to focus on the flesh, we're supposed to focus on the spirit. And when we fulfill the ways of the flesh, it brings forth death. But when we're walking by the spirit, it brings forth life. So 
instead of going to the doctor to get a checkup, we need to be going to Jesus to get a checkup with our heart's condition. And this is what the medical system is actually deceiving people, and maybe not necessarily on purpose, but they're not telling them to go check your heart. Like, no doctor can heal you of unforgiveness. No doctor can heal you of jealousy. No doctor can heal you of road rage, a filthy mouth. No doctor can heal you of um, bitterness. There's no pill that can heal you from these things. Basically, I believe almost every single physical ailment is from some type of sin in our life or possibly is just given to us to grow us closer to God in some way. Because remember, Paul had that thorn and it was a messenger from Satan to help him bear fruit. So, because in Psalm 103, the Lord says that, Forget not thine benefits, who heals all thy sicknesses, who forgives all thine iniquities. So, God is our doctor. Um, you know, of course we do have to take care of the flesh. There are people that can help us in that area, but the most important thing is taking care of our heart because our heart is evil and it's wicked. Our heart wants to yell at people. Our heart makes our flesh want to be impatient over something stupid as a car going slow. Um, our, our heart is wicked. We were born into sin, so we were born wicked. That's why we have to be born again of a new creation, of a new, a new getting, getting a new heart, getting the heart of God, you know, growing close to God's heart. God's heart is pure. There's no hate in it. There's no jealousy except for us when we're not hanging out with him. And there's no um, violence in his heart. There's no fornication in his heart. There's no adultery in God's heart. He's pure. And when we become born again, we become pure too. And we no longer want those things. So people need to stop focusing on the flesh. You know, I was in such bondage focusing on my flesh. I had to make sure I woke up to eat this and this and this to make sure my healthy was good, my body was healthy, and that I had enough energy. And y'all, our energy doesn't even come from the earth. No five-hour shot, energy shot, no Red Bull monster, none of that. It's all false, and it makes us depend on every on anything else but God. So if you're getting your energy from five-hour energy shots and Red Bulls, you're not getting your energy from God. You're not really depending on Him, even in that smallest area. And whenever I was working at my horse farm, well, not mine, but a horse farm, I was cleaning the stalls, and I this last stall was so hard and heavy, and just, I literally felt like I couldn't pitchfork and pick up anymore. I was so drained from the heat, and just the, my body was, I just felt y'all like I was gonna just flop over because I was so tired and I cried out to God I just said I cried I literally cried because I thought I was gonna fall over I was like God please I need your strength and after I cried I took a deep breath and I felt rejuvenated and I was like I can do all things through Christ and immediately he like jolted me with energy and I could finish and it was amazing like, we don't have to go to the world for anything. It's just amazing. God wants to be our everything. Our everything. So, my encouragement to you is to just go get a checkup with God, the one who knows your heart's condition. He knows if you have unforgiveness in your heart. He knows if you have pain in your heart that where you've been hurt and you didn't let it out. You just covered it up or harvested it in a different area because... You thought, ah, oh, it hurt me, oh well, but really not oh well. God knows that it hurt you. He wants you to talk about it so he can heal you, so you can truly love that person even though they hurt you. So y'all really just, we just really need to realize that once the inside of our heart, our cup is cleaned, the outside will be clean too. You know, don't we can't be fooled by outward appearances. Someone may look holy, on the outside because they're healthy and they wear dress modest clothing and they may speak in the kind words and flatter but really inside their heart is a ravening wolf and they're wicked and only God knows that and he wants to purify our hearts in the book of James he says come to God all you sinners and double-minded purify your hearts and your hand cleanse your hands 
Um, and if we confess our faults to him who is worthy, he will um, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that starts by vocalizing our faults, repenting, repenting of all things, not just repenting of drug addiction, repenting of fear. Fear is sin. Perfect love casts out fear. So we have to go to God and ask why we're fearing and then repent of it and repent of lukewarmness. I'm fearful of man as I had to repent of being fearful of man. And then he will put you through a situation to sh so you can show your repentance. You know, I told him I was sorry, but he gave me a situation where I had to face it and now face the fear of man. You know, repentance is a verb. It's what you do. It's not what you say. And many people believe that they can just repent and say sorry and ask for forgiveness and God forgives you. We're forgiven when we show our forgiveness. Like a forgiven person can only be forgiven when they stop doing what they do. I mean, you can even forgive them when they keep doing it. But like in reality, when you really forgive someone, when you're really sorry, you're so sorry that you don't want to do it again. But may God bless you and cleanse your heart and may you go up to him and check up with him and ask your heart's condition so he can cleanse you so that you may be accounted worthy to stand before his holy eyes and his presence on the day of judgment. Because we have no excuses, we are the one that choose eternity. We don't choose eternity by saying a sinner's prayer and we don't choose eternity by just believing in Jesus. He says, those who believe in me, those who love me, obey me. We have to obey him. Whenever we really fall madly in love with God is when we can truly start to obey him. We have to fall madly in love with God and realize all the things he's done for us and is doing for us and for people. He's so great. And my prayer for you is that the Heavenly Father above of mercy, grace, truth, correction, peace, is that in Jesus' mighty name, you fall madly in love with he who created you. Because that's all you need to understand him and grow close to him. In Jesus' name, 